go on to get the Republican nomination and we will go on to easily beat Hillary or Bernie or whoever the hell they throw up there. Iowa, we love you. We thank you. You're special. We will be back many, many times. In fact, I think I might come here and buy a farm. I love it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Now, now, Donald Trump did not buy the farm last night in Iowa, but he did not do as well as expected either. Despite leading the polls prior to the Iowa caucus, Ted Cruz won it with 28 percent. Trump in second place with 24 percent, a percentage point ahead of third place Marco Rubio. To talk about Iowa and Donald Trump and what's ahead, we're pleased to welcome from Newsmax, Washington, one of my all-time favorite writers, R. Emmett Terrell, Loved all his work at the American Spectator, and he's the author of The Death of Liberalism. Bob, it is great to have you here on Newsmax Prime. Looking back to the Iowa caucus, surprised at uh, Trump's number two finish? I wasn't greatly surprised because I, I don't put much stock in the polls, and of course, I'm right not to. Uh, the polls are, tend to be a little bit inaccurate. Uh, but I think he did a good job. Who would have said eight months ago that Donald Trump is going to be a front runner in the uh, march to the White House? I don't think anybody would have. I don't think anybody could have dreamt that he'd do this well. And uh, now he's go, going on to New Hampshire and South Carolina. So uh, I expect to see him uh, do even better in New Hampshire and South Carolina and on through the South. Well, speaking of New Hampshire, since it's next up, if you could offer Trump any advice, what would that be? Well, I don't think I'd take a chance at trying to <laughs> advise. Uh, you know, everybody else that's tried to advise him has gotten a uh, slur sent their way. Uh, he, he, I think he's got a capacity uh, that only a great marketer would, or a very great politician would have, and that's he makes the issues. He spots out there in the audience, uh, a, a, a group of, uh, of uh, voters that other people haven't spotted, and he opens them up. He spotted the independent vote, and he's bringing them our way. In that book of mine that you mentioned, I pointed out that every conservative victory has leaned heavily on the independent vote, and he's bringing them out. So uh, without... Uh, any kind of uh, suggestion from me, I think he's doing very well, and he, he can do it without Terrell's advice. Fair enough. We'll see what happens a week from today in New Hampshire. But, but to Trump and his capacity to identify issues, you know, during my days in Congress, I wrote a book. I authored legislation taking on illegal immigration. But here comes Trump, and he makes that the defining issue. In the final analysis, is that his gift? highlighting issues that need to be addressed? I wrote it, I wrote just exactly that several months ago, and it, I think it's true. Uh, another issue that he made in about 24 hours, 48 hours a week or so ago, he made Bill Clinton's shameless womanizing and her shameless enablement of Bill uh, a, a, an issue that I've been trying to make it for 23 years. Uh, occasionally with success, uh, but uh, I can't find anyone to keep up the interest in it. Uh, now we have them all interested in it, and that's because of uh, Donald Trump. So Donald Trump can define issues. That is the gift of a marketer, a politician, and perhaps a national leader in the years to come. Again, we'll monitor what happens next week in New Hampshire. Uh, for now, Bob Terrell from Newsmax, Washington. Our thanks to you, and again, the name of Bob's book, The Death of Liberalism. So you heard what the esteemed R. Emmett Terrell had to say. Do you see it the way Bob does? Do you agree with what I had to say? We'd love to hear from you. Here's how you tell us what's on your mind. Uh, get to us at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Up next, Edward Klein talks about Hillary and the curious Democrat caucus in Iowa.